it's time for me to give the floor to uh, uh, the third speaker of this uh, webinar, Associate Professor Chang Gun Yu, who will speak about, uh, do an overview of second line treatment option in advent hepatocellular carcinoma, how to achieve optimal sequencing. Yeah, thank you, Michelle, uh, for a kind introduction. This is a, uh, the polling question. Uh, what is your preferred uh, second line uh, treatment option following progression on serafinib? So the first one is atizubab, and the B is regorafinib, carbogenatin, or lamucinumab, and third, uh, C is a doba tremi, and D is doba, and E remba, and the F, I'm not sure. Please vote. Yes, uh, polling the survey shows that the about half of the um, the, the audience uh, selected chose the regorafinib, like carbogenatin, or, or lamucinumab, which were which are now the appro approved the standard at subsequent therapy, and the followed by the currently approved the first line therapy like the atijubav or the dobatrimi, so followed by doba or the lemba. This is another polling question, as uh, given that ICI-based uh, uh, combination therapy like atijubav or dobatrimi are uh, established as first-line treatment, what is your preferred the second-line therapy after progression on these uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor-based uh, first-line therapies? Uh, number one is the clinical trial, the B is rafinib, C lumbatinib, D rafinib, E carbogenatinib, F is atezubav, if not used previously. G is the dobatrimi, if not used previously. Please vote. The results show that the uh, clinical trials is the most frequently chosen answers, uh, followed by the lembatim, uh, 30%, then the atezubav, 15%, and zorafinib, 11%. So according to the uh, current BCAC guidelines, uh, participation into the clinical trial is uh, the recommended after progression on the first line atijubav or dolotrami, as you can see here. However, in daily practice, most patients are not eligible to participate in the appropriate clinical trials because of sometimes lack of the, uh, the polio function or the lack of the uh, trial itself. Therefore, for practical reasons, uh, the most patients are inevitably uh, treated with the available and remaining therapeutic agents after progression on the first-line immune checkpoint inhibitor-based combination therapy. This is the, uh, the research of the multinational, recently, recently published uh, multinational retrospective study. Uh, this study has demonstrated that uh, post-anti-cancer therapy following progression on immune checkpoint inhibitors associated uh, and and that this study shows that the uh, the uh, the post anti cancer therapy following progression of immune checkpoint inhibitor is associated with uh, prolonged survivor than those without and approximately one third of patients received the TKIs after immune checkpoint inhibitor progression the another multi center retrospective st study including 271 patients has shown that post ICI therapy is linked to prolong the survivor in, in, in HCC. The investigators analyzed the survival outcomes uh, based on the different uh, the post-ICI treatment patterns. In this study, uh, TKIs with or without immune checkpoint inhibitor maintenance uh, was associated with a better survivor compared to ICI maintenance beyond PD or no treatment, as you can see here in the uh, right side graph, survival graph. And these uh, two uh, study results uh, suggest that using TKIs as a pragmatic, pr pragmatic option uh, could improve uh, patient outcomes after progression on first line immune check inhibitors. Uh, for the next few slides, uh, I will direct to cover the optimal sequence, sequencing after progression on immu and the immunotherapy. Uh, this is a polling question as uh, do you believe is there any optimal uh, sequencing after progressing on IO? In HCC, yes, uh, the sixty-one percent of the audience uh, chose not yet, and twenty-five percent followed by the no. The only four percent uh, says uh, they believe that there is optimal sequencing after progression on IO at, uh, in HCC at at this moment. The currently is. Currently, is that there is no definitive uh, the evidence from either prospective or retrospective studies on the optimal sequence in HCC. The 
in the era of the currently, uh, currently recently established the ICI based uh, combination, the first line therapy. So the, apart from the atizumab and dobatrami, there are multiple treatment options uh, previously approved as a first line therapy, including uh, lambatinib, sorafenib, and subsequent therapies including legorafenib, cabozantinib, uh, lamucinib, and or the uh, ipilimumab plus nivolumab. So we can use these agents if patients progress on ICI-based first-line therapy. However, the challenges lie in whether the efficacy observed in the prior phase three registration studies for these agents uh, can be replicated after progression on recently established uh, the first-line atezubav or the dobatremi. Then in one of the largest retrospective studies conducted by the Korean Cancer Study Group, which included 440 patients receiving regrofinib, a significant proportion of patients were treated with uh, regrofinib after progression on the second-line nivolumab or the pembrolizumab, anti-PD-1 monotherapy. In this study, as you can see here, uh, there were no significant difference in PFS and OS based on the uh, prior exposure to immune checkpoint inhibitors. In a, the Korean multicenter retrospective study involving the 110 patients treated with carbogentinib, in this study, 85% of them had uh, previously received the immune checkpoint inhibitor, so mostly monotherapies, PD-1 monotherapy. The study found no difference in terms of PFS and OS with carbogentinib based on prior exposure to immune checkpoint inhibitors. It is important to note that the interpretation of these studies on regorafenib and carbogentinib is limited because the study populations mainly received ICA monotherapy, such as nivolumab or pembrolizumab, and also most patients received the sorafenib as a first-line therapy, and so, um, so rather than the atuzumab or dobatremi. Uh, despite, despite these limitations, uh, these studies uh, suggest that the efficacy of the regorafenib and carbogentinib uh, so they may not be influenced by prior use of immune checkpoint inhibitors and effectively used as a subsequent therapy after progression on ICI-based first-line therapy. The, what about the effectiveness of previously first line, uh, previous first-line therapies, uh, such as rafinib or the lambatinib? Here's the data. Uh, so in a small multinational retrospective study that analyzed the second-line therapy options after progression on atezubav, the lambatinib uh, demonstrated a better PFS compared to sorafenib. Medium PFS was 6.1 months versus uh, 2.5 months, but this, uh, there was no uh, statistical difference in terms of OS between sorafenib and lambatinib, which is consistent with the findings from the previous phase three reflect trial in the uh, first line setting. The, it is important to note that this analysis was based on a very small sample size, so each interpretation should be approached with caution. And further studies uh, involving a large number of, of patients are necessary to draw a more definitive conclusion. And the recently Japanese investigators presented their real-world practice pattern in HCC. The in this upper, the upper areas, you, you can see the bar graph. And the previously Srafinib was the major uh, player in the first line setting, then Rembatinib, then recently Atijabev becomes a major player as a first-line therapy in Japan. And the edge of subscribe therapy, as you can see here in the, uh, the below table, the most patients uh, receive the lambatinib. So the Japanese doctors uh, seems to be favored the lambatinib as a second-line therapy after progression on the atezubav. And the response rates in this study shows the, uh, the 15%. All those, we need more, more follow-up data on this. So this previous one and the, uh, the this uh, study, this retrospective study shows that the uh, the previously established first-line therapy, sorafenib, lambatinib, it could be say, used as a subsequent therapy after progression on the immune checkpoint inhibitor based on first-line therapy. And so, what about the immune checkpoint inhibitor challenges? Uh, the immune checkpoint inhibitor challenges using regimens containing anti-CTRA4 inhibitor so may be considered. In patients who failed on the dobatremi or atezubav, since the anti pdl one serves as, serves as the mainstay of current first-line therapy. A retrospective study conducted in Hong Kong so included the 25 patients who received ipilimumab in combination with nebo 
or pembrol after progressing on previous immune check inhibitor therapy. Mostly, it's uh, anti-PV1 monotherapy, and the 4%, 4 of uh, these patients had prior, prior exposure to atigibaf. This study uh, found that 17% of patients with primary resistance to prior uh, immune check inhibitors achieved an objective response. So because of the small sample size, we need uh, the uh, the more, uh, more data to suggest the, uh, that the immune check inhibitor challenges, uh, particularly in using the anti CTRA4. The IMBRAVE 251 study is, the, um, is, on, is the ongoing randomized trials uh, investigating the role of maintaining the atezolizumab in combination with TKIs. These trials compare atezolizumab in combination with lambatinib or sorafenib to lambatinib or sorafenib monotherapy in patients who progressed on the atezolizumab uh, first-line therapy. The results of the study will provide insights into whether continuing anti pd one therapy even after disease progression is effective or not. So this is my conclusion, and the, there is a lack of solid evidence for optimal uh, second-line regimens after progression on new standard first-line IO-based combination therapy, and previously approved drugs as first-line or subsequent-line therapy may be used for these patients if there are no adequate clinical trials. Uh, multiple small retrospective studies suggest that the efficacy outcomes of post IOTKIs are comparable to those in registration studies if the patients are medically fit and with good liver function. So multiple prospective studies are ongoing for regorafinib, carbogentinib, and lambatinib. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, it's time for question. I do not see in the chat specific uh, question for you. I have one. Do you think that it's time now for sequential trials, evaluating diverse sequence of treatment and maybe um, uh, choosing some sequence because it could be better to use this kind of drug after uh, induction of immune reaction or something like that? The others, uh, some TKIs, is, uh, looks very similar, but the, those, uh, the, all those T TKIs have some different potential uh, for the immune modulation. So, so sometimes I found we found that the, uh, the even after the IO progression, so following the TKI shows very dramatic response. So we we may need to conduct the uh, the sequencing, sequencing trials uh, to show the efficacy at the pre-existing agents. The, after the newly uh, they developed the, uh, the first-line IO-based therapy. Okay, thank you. I have, maybe, Timon, do you have a question for Shangu or not? My question is, what would you do in your clinical practice after IO? Would you yeah. would you start with lenvatinib? Would you start uh, with sorafenib? What, what would you do? <laughs> so, yeah, it, good, difficult question, I know. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the subsequent therapy is mainly affected by the evidence, also, but it's affected by the uh, the registration, uh, the regulation issue in the, each countries and the reimbursement and the approval. So in Korea, so dobatrimi is not approved approved yet, and only atezolizumab is the uh, the approved agents in the first line fitting. So. So in, in my practice, atezolizumab is the first line therapy. If patients are progress on the atezolizumab and patients have good liver function, so I, I personally uh, the find, uh, so look look for the the clinical trial, adequate clinical trial. But this, uh, there is no any uh, clinical trial to fit for the patients. I the first consider lambatinib uh, for the patients. Uh, but if there is some patients who have some marginal liver function, uh, so I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll recommend the sorafenib as a second line uh, therapy, and also um, the, because it is these are the available. But the recently our the retrospect our the prospective study for the uh, the carbogentinib shows the median PFS of the five months after progression on the IO. Uh, so I I would like to the give the, sometimes give the carbogentinib after progression at back, but this the but that carbogentinib is now, now not approved as in Korea as a subsequent therapy of the atezolizumab. So, so it, that, that option is not uh, the, the possible right now in Korea. Yeah. 